Hey guys, Bill Jordan here. I'm at 201-790-3368. I do candid video interviews. If you're a painter, sculptor, or a candlestick maker, this is where you need to be. People buy from people they know. Now, the best way for them to know you is with my candid video interview because it resonates with them on a the soul level. And that when that happens, they are sold. You know, they, they love you, they want to support you, they want to help you. They take you with them wherever they go. That's why you want to call me. That's what happens. I'm a specialist at that, okay? But I'm talking, I'm ranting about, you know, the established art, you know, world industry and flipping and being intelligent and being stupid. Uh, now, check this out, man. This is the insanity. This is beyond being stupid. This whole thing is insane, right? You have these guys, right, that are, you know, I mean, like, Here's how I think it works. You know, way back in, let's say, the, I guess the Renaissance days, or let's say, let's go back to the medieval days, after the fall of Rome, when the darkness fell over the Europa, right? Now the art was, at that point, was only supported by nobility, if they could support any art at all, because they weren't living high off the hog either. Then came the Renaissance, or rather, <clears throat> we have guys like the Medici, commerce started happening. We have the Medici, all those guys, you know, they were not, um, well, they were, well, in, in, in Italy, was now called Italy. You know, there were no kings per se. We had city state lords, you know, the Medici, you know, those guys, those are the big guys. And these are the guys who funded the cultural stuff. And you had the church, the Roman Catholic Church. They were, the Catholic Church was, you know, commissioning these works by, you know, uh, Leonardo da Vinci or the other guy, you know, whatever, Michelangelo. Right? That's what they were doing. That's how the arts were coming. But the, the secular stuff, more secular work was, was, you know, fashioned by the up and coming middle class or the, the, uh, the bourgeoisie. And, you know, we had, then you had on the, below those guys, you had basically the serfs, the guy, the, they were living in mud, mud huts. They couldn't afford art. So it was the bourgeois guys, the Medici and all those guys who were supporting the artists and the craftsmen of that time. And so like, so with that being the case, um, the, the, the proliferation of art took place when you had expanding, you know, a widening middle class, all right? Now, that's where we are today, you know, but, the, the, the concept is that, that the guys at the top is still the Medici, they're the Mac Daddies. They're the ones who pay the big bucks. And there's a, and there's a concern like any that like there should be when people are buying these, these, these items as commodities, not as functional pieces. What happens when, when the bubble breaks? That's the big fear. That's the fear that, that the flippers, you know, have in the heart, put in the heart of, of, the, of the traditionalist. If the, if the market breaks, that means that the money that they invested in these pieces is going to devalue. But of course, everything's going to devalue when the bubble breaks, like in 2008, right? It wasn't just art, it was houses, you know, everything. For those people who weren't astute enough or big enough to weather the storm. Or I'll put it another way. But everything, everybody suffered except for those people who had contracts. <laughs> you know, indelible contracts, okay? Or even better than that, everybody suffered except those guys who actually caused the crash, okay? So, you know, but when the art bubble crashes, you know, what's going to happen? Will the, will the art be less valuable? Will it be less art worthy? No, it won't be. It'll be the same stuff, but it won't. But you won't look at it the same way because you didn't put a intellectual or a mental price tag on it and shell out dollars to claim this piece, making it valuable to you. Now, is that intelligent or stupid? <clears throat> I wouldn't say either one. It's just the way it is. You have a choice, you know, to, to look at look for work that's really art worthy or to look at work that, you know, look at work as art worthy, look at work that has a nice price tag and is and art worthy or look at work that it just has a price tag and not art worthy. 
And there's a lot of that too. And the thing about it is, guys, here's, here's the thing. To do well, you don't have to be the best guy. It's, that, that's the, that's because you, it's not about the art. So you get this thing, you know, you get your, your you know, you're all twisted. You're twisted with the fact you have to slave for hours and hours and be the best and best. That's good if you want to be that, but you don't have to be that. Why? Because you're not dealing with on that level. You're not dealing with from the art standpoint as a function to, to bring energy from the gods into your body, into the society, which you should be doing. It's not sacred. It's egotistical thinking that you're going to make this piece and you're going to sell it. And in some kind of way, that's an accomplishment. The accomplishment is just to make the piece from the spirit and to give it freely without anticipation of having to sell. You, because the energy you give out, you will get back. But in our society, which is, you know, you know physical, that's the way it works. It's your, your worth is determined by the selling price. Your value is determined by the selling price. All right? I'm saying that's not the way it should be. So when the bubble breaks, that's going to make it even. And the guys who had the big stuff, their values will go down. They may have, they may have paid you know, 20 million, now it's only worth five. Oh my God, they lost 15 million. They're upset. But they still have $5 million they can use you know, to, to save themselves. Now, how does that all this benefit you as an artist, as a person, and as a person who's not in that higher echelon? Well, that means we can play in our level. You know, if we understand that the game is played, play it. I think many of us don't understand or do not want to understand. We're happy and content just making stuff. You know, you know if you're in business, this is important. If you're not, then it's not, you know, you won't like what I say. Right? So what I'm saying is, what will happen when the art bubble breaks? Where will you be? Are you preparing for the next art bubble? <laughs> You know, how are you going to safeguard yourself? Are you going to overproduce? Are you going to produce wisely? Are you going to market wisely? Are you going to call me on 201790 to get your story out so you can get out ahead of the pack? By not calling me, I know you're not serious about your work. You are, you are falling into the category of the stupid, not knowing, not being able to read the signs. The signs are telling you, man, that what I'm offering you is the way to go because technology dictate, dictates this. This is, this is the next step. Now, this step will only be around for about maybe at the most 36 months. It'll be gone after that. It'll be something else because of technology. All right? Call me in 201-790-3368. My name is Bill Light Clinton, Jordan Light Michael. All right? I do candid video interviews. If you're a painter or sculptor, or a candlestick maker, this is where you need to be. I'll be right back with another one, another hot topic today, another spin, another part of the yarn about being stupid or intelligence. Peace out.